Hello everyone and welcome to another really really crazy game from the Vergani Cup that uh, ended yesterday. It's uh, from round 9 and both Korobov and Maxim Lagarde are fighting uh, for first place. Uh, so a win uh, would definitely go a long way. And uh, I have a little bit of an update uh, regarding the uh, last video I made. But we're going to discuss that after we check out this game. So it's a really crazy game. A lot of missed opportunities uh, you guys will enjoy. Let's check it out. Korobov with the white pieces opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4, g6, knight to c3, and bishop to g7. So the king's Indian defense is on the board. We have e4 uh, and d6. We have bishop to e2 and uh, Lagarde castles. We have knight to f3 and now uh, striking in the center with e5. So this is all very standard stuff. We have castles, e captures on d4, knight captures, and the rook to e8 going after the pawn here. So f3, we defend it, and now knight to c6, attacking the knight on d4. And if the knight moves, there could be a little bit of a problem here so here bishop to e3 we defend it and now at knight to h5 we have queen to d2 uh, developing the queen, connecting the rooks, and now uh, knight to f4. It seems like you're just giving up your knight, but this is all still very standard theory. You want to give up the knight to grab the uh, the knight on d4. So here, knight captures on c6, and the position up until this point is a very well-known one, and usually people just go knight captures on e2 with check, and after this is captured, for example, then we capture here on c6, and then we can even trade the bishop, slits, uh, bishop d4, captures, captures, and the game continues. Nothing special, but uh, white has a a very enjoyable game. He has a very nice uh, central setup here. Uh, the f3 pawn nicely guarding e4. He has this very nice grip on the central d5 square. Uh, and it's not much, but it, it's okay. But here, uh, instead, after knight captures on c6, we don't have the usual knight captures on e2. We have bishop captures on c3. Now, it's a little bit of a a uh, different idea because you give up your dark square bishop very early on, uh, but that is the, the surprise. So let's see what he had in mind. Oh, yeah, and of course, it's as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so here, uh, you can't go queen captures on c3. Uh, I mean, you could, but if queen captures, you allow this to come with checks, so your king and queen are now forked. Uh, king f2, let's say you're going to capture on c3, we're going to capture on d8, and after knight captures on e4 because we don't want to just, you know, give up a knight for nothing. Uh, we're gonna pick up a pawn and after let's say pawn captures we're gonna capture on d8 and black will be up a pawn so that's why you can't really uh, capture with the queen so instead b captures on c3 here in this line you can see that black is the one that doubled white spawns and now knight captures on e2 with check queen captures and b captures on c6 so a very uh well uh, pretty much a symmetrical structure uh, and now a very nice uh, point by korobov c5 uh, you don't want to allow black to play c5 and uh, gra grab hold of this diagonal, for example. Here you are saying that this light square bishop will be a useless piece for uh, for quite some time. And black should really consider maybe uh, just a5 to try and get this bishop into the game uh, via bishop to a6 right away. Uh, but okay, here we have d5. You don't want to capture. If you capture it, this is just terrible. Uh, it's a really ugly position. So d5 and now we have rook a to d1. Uh, we have queen to e7, getting the queen away from the d file, queen to f2, uh, and now we have f5, attacking that center, uh, so saying that, uh, okay, this will, this will open up and then I will develop my light square bishop. And here Korobov could uh, make uh, a very, very interesting pawn sacrifice with e5. Uh, he didn't play this, but I will show it uh, as it's, uh, it's super interesting. Point is that black's light square bishop is terrible here and we want to give up our pawn here. Now you have to capture it. If you don't capture it, I mean, it, it's just a pass pawn on e5. So for example, captures now bishop d4 and after the queen moves somewhere, we're going to play rook f to e1. And now, uh, okay, we gave up upon but look at our bishop and look at black's bishop and of course the bishops are of opposite colors so nothing will be able to uh, challenge this bishop on d4 if you ever want to uh, get rid of it you will have to give up a rook for that bishop but it is it, just a monster bishop and uh, well it would be hard for black to defend this so instead after f5 we have bishop to d4 uh, and now bishop to a6. Black now gets the, the bishop into the game. Rook fe1. F captures on e4. We have f captures on e4. D captures on e4. And now c4. Uh, a very nice tricky move by uh, by Korobo here. Saying that if you capture this, uh, I'm just going to play bishop to a1. Now the idea is uh, queen d4. I'm going to attack your bishop and threaten queen to h8. And there really isn't a good move you can make. For example, bishop d5. We still play queen d4. And it's a terrible position for black. So instead, after c4, 
we have queen to f7, uh, Lagarde offers a queen trade and uh, queen to e3. Of course, uh, Korobov keeps the queens on the board uh, and then now rook a to d8. Now it's actually okay to capture the c4 pawn, but it's not like white can do anything about this anytime soon. So instead rook a to d8 and now bishop to a1. So as you can see, uh, black, uh, white's uh, dark square bishop is still much, much better than black's light square bishop because at some point you can play queen c3 uh, and black will not be able to defend this. And here we have queen captures on c4. Uh, eliminating uh, one rook uh, would have been uh, a bit of a bit of a better idea because now the position is close uh, to winning if not winning for white but you have to find the correct idea uh korobov missed it he played h3 here but rook to c1 uh, is uh, the, the way to win this position because what you want to do uh, is win uh, one of the squares that you can use to play queen to c3 or queen to h8 it doesn't have to be c3 it can be any square on this diag uh, on this diagonal that's undefended and the point is let's say queen d3 we're gonna play queen to f2 now we're threatening queen f f6 and then we're gonna uh, deliver uh, queen g7 or queen to h8 and now you can defend this uh if you play rook to f8 then we just go queen to b2 so uh, that's not really doing anything so point is after rook to e6 uh we're gonna play rook to f1 and now there is no defense queen is coming to f7 the bishop slices all the way here uh black would have to give up the queen uh and the bishop for for the two rooks but first we threaten checkmate and only after black defends this somehow we recapture here and now it's a bishop and queen against two rooks of course white will be winning here so uh, that's the uh, the way to go, but it's very, very complicated. And of course, uh, I don't know the exact time on the clocks, but I imagine uh, it wasn't very abundant. So here, uh, Korobov uh, made, made a safety move. He played h3, uh, made some breathing room for the king here. But now we have rook to d5. And now the same idea uh, kind of applies, but not as, as strongly. So rook to c1, we have queen to d3. Yeah, even though queen to b4 here would have been more precise, queen to d3, and now queen to h6. And now the point is, after queen to f2, you can play rook to f5, as the rook is on d5, but still queen b2, and it can be very, very annoying for black. Uh, but okay, Korobov tried this, queen h6, he wants to go queen to g7, now rook to e7. Another uh, imprecision by black, uh, because now you allow rook to b1 to b8, so maybe this rook remaining here and rook to d7 guarding uh, the, the g7 square would have been better. But Korobov, again, doesn't go rook b1. He goes queen to h4. Uh, this is the final round, so I, uh, of course, the tension is very high. And, uh, well, uh, you want to win, but you don't want to overpress for a win. So sometimes you will have to go for a... Uh, for a lesser move. And now g5. Uh, again, a move that uh, will not do. Uh, Korobov plays a uh, queen to h6 and now rook to f7. Again, we have to guard against queen to f6. So basically, uh, black's less than moves and whites uh, are just trying to get the queen uh, on this diagonal and black, of course, tries to prevent this. So here we have queen to e6. Again, rook to b1 here is just deadly, but it's uh, for some reason, it's, it seems to be uh, hard to spot because even if you block with the bishop, we can just give up a pawn here and after the bishop moves or captures the pawn doesn't really matter we deliver this check and this is the point if rook d8 now you have this queen g <laughs> not queen g6 queen g5 check connects with the rook on d8 that's kind of the point and after king f8 of course this will be checkmate captures captures and queen captures queen will be checkmate the bishop covers g7 so of course uh, this is not uh, something that korobo would have trouble seeing but uh, uh, i guess uh well, just the, the tension of the final round. So here, queen to e6 was played, but now bishop to c4, now threatening some nasty discoveries here. And the position is still winning for white, but you have to play it very precisely. You have to play queen to e8 check, uh, and after the rook blocks, you can't go to g7. We're going to pick up here, and now, uh, well... What do you what do you do? It's not a it's not a fun position for black. There really aren't any threats here. You're, you're going to deliver this queen to e6 check. Then you're going to pick up the e4 pawn, and it looks uh, a little bit crazy, but it is completely winning for white. However, Korobov tried to improve his position a little bit by playing king to h2 first, and now. Uh, well, now uh, the winning uh, is no longer possible. But you have to find the one move that saves black, or, or rather, there are two. Uh, possibilities for black but one is uh, much more uh, uh, concise so feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for black here while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this uh, brilliant idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is of course Quinta G3. 
that's the stuff queen g3 let's see that again queen to g3 check and uh, there's really not much for white to do the problem is if you go back uh well if you don't capture the queen if you go king to h1 you don't want to play g1 if you go king to g1 then rook d2 and this is just terrible and now the, both the rook and queen can capture on g2 so better better would be maybe king to h1 but still rook d2 and now white can uh, save the game with with queen to g4 or, or rather <laughs> you really can't this is uh no this is even worse yeah uh so it, it's very hard to uh, to dodge this you, you can't move the king so here uh, king to g3 was played it's the only move that uh, doesn't lose you the game and now of course comes rook to d3 with check opening up the attack uh, to the white queen so king h2 and now bishop captures on e6 we have rook captures on e4 now comes the bishop to d5 and look at this now the bishop attacks the g2 pawn we're gonna put the rook here put the rook here we're gonna attack the g2 pawn with everything and all of a sudden uh black's light square bishop is just as strong uh, as white's light square bishop if not stronger so rook to e8 check we of course block this rook f8 rook to e7 now threatening this um, uh, rook to g7 check with some uh, windmill action but now uh, rook to f2 not only attacking g2 but also freeing up the f8 square for our king so rook to g7 check we have to go to f8 rook captures on g5 we defend this but now rook d to d2 and there's no uh, not much you can do here you have to play rook to g1 now comes rook captures on a2 we have bishop to d4 uh, attacking the rook and now rook f to e2 and now h4 by white uh, and here uh well it's a, it's a really tough position you have the past a pawn so you might consider pushing this but here we have h5 uh with the idea that uh, okay if you if you capture this then you remove one of the defenders from the g2 pawn uh so here rook to f5 check king to e8 and now well rook captures on h5 this is uh, basically a draw offering uh which korobov um uh, sorry which lagarde accepts by playing rook captures on g2 check and it was in this position uh on move 42 that korobov and lagarde agreed to a draw as there is nothing more to be done here once the trade is uh, done let's say captures captures you're gonna go king h3 uh okay the rook will move let's say rook to g8 you don't want to allow any checks now it's uh the the, the past a pawn versus the past h pawn and the bishops are of opposite color uh this bishop uh, okay both of them are guarding everything here so uh, you don't really have to worry white uh, is guarding that h8 square but still with with uh, you know decent play this this will be an easy draw for both of them so really really exciting game uh korobov uh, had many many opportunities to, to take a win here and it's a very unlike uh, uh Korobov to uh, miss such ideas but that's just the tension of the of the final round in a tournament uh you, you've seen that whenever we cover uh, for example even when Magnus is playing and it, it's a final game uh, the tension is extremely high and you know uh, tactics will be missed uh but yeah also I wanted to mention uh, regarding the previous video I told you that uh, Salimova only uh, played like five games so far but there was something broken with the chess 24 results page where I was checking it out uh so here are the uh, the actual uh, opponents that she played you can see that uh, she faced uh, no less than six grandmasters in the event and she scored seven out of nine which means that uh, she now uh, ties uh, for, for first place in this um, uh, very strong Bergani Cup for example you can see here and that it's a four-way tie for first place uh, Lali Babu, Hans Mokeniman, Vitali Bernatsky and Nurgul Salimova with seven out of nine and for example Anton Korobov uh, who you guys uh, of course know very well uh, scored six and a half out of nine as he missed a very very uh, very strong win here uh in, in this game so you can see just how uh, an incredible incredible event this was in fact for Nurgul Salimova uh it was just a just a spectacular uh, spectacular showing uh so yeah uh that's the game i uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and the the additional info uh, i would like to thank duras press global tennis network uh, uh duras press again uh, i made uh, an error there for some reason i will have to improve on this on the next video uh david hertz and robert stadelman for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon uh continuing uh the coverage uh, well maybe some uh, other games from this event uh checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world uh, so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day